And welcome to another uh, Food for Thought Ministry podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Mark of the Beast today. And if you haven't, don't know what the Mark of the Beast is, stay tuned and you'll find out. At the way Jesus loves me I stand amazed At the way that he came When he said he loved me Forever all eternity. I... Welcome to another Food for Thought Ministry podcast. My name is Wayne Jerry. To the left of me is Pastor Linda Anthony, my co-host. And uh, we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, we're not here to entertain people. We're here to uplift the name of Jesus to a to a uh, dying world out there that doesn't know Jesus and doesn't understand Jesus and doesn't understand that there is life with Jesus. So we're here to explain that and uh, hopefully change their hearts so that they can uh, come to Jesus and know the love of Jesus for themselves. Uh, right now we're uh, we're going to go into prayer. You want to Yes, sir. I'm going to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come this day thanking you for another Thank day's you, journey, journey, Lord. Thanking you, Thank you Lord. Lord, for waking us up this morning, starting us on Thank our way, you, giving us a mind to want to pray, Thank live you, right, Jesus. act right, talk right. Lord, we thank you that we know we didn't do this on our own. Yes, Lord. That you called us out of darkness into your marvelous yes. light. Lord, Amen. we thank you. We thank you for doing that, Lord. And we asking you, Lord, to continue to call your people out of darkness yes. into your marvelous light on Amen. this day. On this day in Jesus' name, Lord, let people begin to repent all over the earth and begin to come before you and say, what must thank I do you, to Jesus. be saved? In Jesus' name, we pray. And all you got to do is just say, Lord, I repent of my sins. Help me. I need you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the word of God saturate our soul, yes. feed our soul yes. as, your, as, as food nourishes our body. Yes. And Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to talk about the mark of the beast. Uh I don't know. I don't know how many people out there know who the Mark of the Beast is. We also like to let you know that if you want to make comments or ask a question or something, you can always call that number that's in the bottom of your screen there, uh, 919-25, 810-919-2540, and give us a call. And even if you have something to, uh, you know, some advice on us how to make this podcast even better. Amen. Um, Call us up and let us know. Don't don't be in the background there. Uh, move your way to the front. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so we're going to talk about the mark of the beast. Uh, six six six. Six six six. Six six. And the first thing I think that we need to do as Christians, even newer Christians, and even older Christians too, because some Christians just don't get in to study this out. You know, sometimes they don't. So uh, I think the first thing we need to understand is uh, biblical numerology. And uh, some people say that you're not to get the numbers and stuff, but yet God uses numbers in the Bible. And for example, seven, he, he, he built the earth in seven days and on the seventh day he rested. Uh, we also have seven uh, vials that are opened up in Revelation. So seven is the number of completion. And uh, God's number is 777 in the Hebrew. I guess it's Hebrew. Mm -hmm. It's 777, which means uh, uh, completion. Or no, wait a minute. I take that back. Uh, I think the number is, Jesus' number is 888, not 777. It's not 777. God is 777. Oh. 
Like Jesus was 888. I didn't know. I thought it was all 777. No, okay. 888. And 888, the number 8 in the Bible represents new beginnings. Okay. So that goes along with uh, being a new creature. All things pass away. All things pass away. All things become new. Okay. See, so uh, it's a new beginning. And we have to have Jesus in order to have that new beginning. Amen. Amen. So with that, we need to understand numerology and get in and understand what numerology is and how God uses numbers. And 666 is the number of man mm. in the Bible. Mm. And 777 is the number of God and 888 is the number of Jesus. Amen. So we want to get into knowing that first and understanding that. Is there anything else you Oh say? no! I was I was waiting on you oh, to wait, get into this. Get okay. in, uh, to tell okay. us what what was what was you going to tell us about? I was going to talk about the five things you need to know about six six six. Five five things. Five okay. things you need to know. Okay. Number one, mm -hmm. we can talk about this. This that the uh, six 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 or the be the mark of the beast is drawn up by Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan is God's adversary. Uh. He duplicates God and everything. Uh, he doesn't come up with anything of his own. <laughs> he usually copies God. And uh, uh, so therefore, Satan is, is the creation, not the creator. No. So, and Satan from time's beginning, mm -hmm. he has always wanted to take over the spot of God. Mm -hmm. I believe what he's doing right now is... Is getting people to fall away from the Bible and Ooh, hallelujah. fall away from mm -hmm. that Bible, mm -hmm. start a new a culture yes. with him as mm -hmm. the leader. Oh, come on. You know, where the people start following him instead of God. And you know what? To add to what you're saying, there's two things that Satan cannot do. What's that? He cannot live saved and he cannot love you. No, he can't. He can, but he can go so far like pretending to love you. But he it'll it'll fall out because he's got to say cuss words. He's got to um he can't live saved because he's gotta he's gotta do some unsaved. It's no way Satan can live saved. That's where you catch him at. Right. He cannot live saved and he cannot go all the way with loving you. He can all go with forgiving you. He can't he can't do all that doesn't fall under his under his character. Forgiveness think, and love and kindness does not fall under his character. Come on. I think also, I think the thing is that, 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 that Satan hates God's people. Yes. Basically, because if you read Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, what happened is, is that Satan uh, was the leader of all praise and worship up in heaven. And uh, he was the main angel. But then because of his, his uh, disobedience to God and wanted to take over heaven... He was cast out of heaven down the earth. Jesus said, I saw Satan, Satan like lightning fall from heaven. And uh, so therefore, uh, the devil hates his uh, God's people because we took over his job. We are the ones in authority over praise and worship, not him. Uh -huh. So therefore, he's upset about that because he's lost that authority. So. So by the fall, he gained some of that back. He gained back the uh, the dom uh, dominion that, that God had given man, uh, was given over to Satan. So now Satan is out there to take over. That's the whole, that was the whole plan from the beginning. That's why he chose Eve to, uh, to deceive because she was the one that was carrying the seed. So he had to corrupt the seed. So the, by corrupting the seed, then the Savior couldn't come. And he would be the only one. So therefore, that that was his his plan from the very beginning was to upseat God and take over his people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we know that he is not he's a creation of God. He is not the the he is not the uh, he's the, the creation, not the creator. Okay, you got anything on that? Okay, I got, uh, I'm, I'm going to read a um, couple of verses on that. What you were just talking about, it says, um, it's re in Revelations 12 and 7, it says, And there was war in the heavens. Michael and mm. his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not, neither was there any place found anymore in heaven. 
the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast unto the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. Amen. And, it, and I heard a loud voice saying, Heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. Listen, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore, this is the last verse. I really need you to hear this. Therefore, rejoice you heavens and you that dwell there, therein, the folks that's already gone. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. So he's mad with the sea and everything that inhabits the earth. Whether you are saved or not, he's angry with it. Right. And he says he's coming down. The, the, the word said he's come down with great wrath against us because he know he only have a short time to do what he has to do. Time is winding up. That's why you got to put on your whole armor and get ready for war, Christians. All those are saying they're ready to come back. Look, come on, come on in and get ready to fight this war. Because if you don't, hell is hot. Come on, Pastor. Come on, our minister. Well, I was going to just say that uh, that uh, what we do is we resist the devil. We mm -hmm. don't fight him. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says to resist the devil and he will flee. Well, see, there's a verse in the Bible where it's Ephesians chapter um, uh, 6 and 10. I have to beg the uh, difference between that because he said put on your whole armor right that you be able to fight against the wild no, it doesn't the say fight yes it does i'm it gonna say stand uh, okay stand doesn't mean fight okay hold on we're gonna we're gonna the fight and when i say fight it's not meaning you can get fist and go okay, to fight can i interject here though go ahead um, if you look at the um the, the armor of god it's mostly a uh, defensive stuff okay it's like yeah you know, it's, it's defensive breastplate, yeah. it's a absolutely shield. so it's like the sword is a sword of the, you know, so there's the word is a sword, right? Right. right. God is sword. So I could see you have to be attired in it, but you still have a weapon, but it's like, it's not like the typical, the other stuff is meant to this. So you could abs basically absorb the uh, blows basically. So, you know, you could take the blows without having a devastating damage done to you. That's right. Why, that's why I look at it. Yeah. Right. That's it. That's, and that's what it's meant to be. It's nothing. We understand that we can't fight the devil with our fists, but we know the word fight, get ready to go to war. You know, when you go to war, you think of fighting, but you don't have to fight. We thank God that we we can't see Satan. And then guess what? Can't see God either. Mm -hmm. So we can't see him. So we have to use what God has given us. That's this word. This word has to be used against Satan. That means living right, talking right, acting right, treating your enemies right, doing everything in here that God said we had to do so that we'd be able to be have our armor on that puts our armor on us by living right was that ephesians chapter six and yeah that's ephesians chapter six it says right. uh put on the whole armor of god just like you said that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil right that we for we wrestle not see we go now you got the word wrestle in there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood i ain't got no business fighting him this is flesh and blood i'm flesh and blood Get your, take your arrows away from fighting men, women, children. Stop fighting them. They, it, it, no, no. If somebody say something mean to you, no longer fight. Understand where the mean words is coming from. Understand the root to the situation. We're fighting Satan on every hand. Don't you get fooled. He wants to, def he wants to fool us. Come on. Amen. Now, when I, when... <laughs> We can get into something, and, you know, I didn't want to get into this. What do you want to get into? What but, happened? You know, when you talk about, and I've talked to John about this before, and I think we've talked about it before. Uh -huh. You know, when we're talking about we don't fight against flesh and blood, uh, the main question on that scripture is who is we? It says we. Who are? Who is we? Me, you, Brother uh Brother John, all the we's, all the we's who know that we stand for God, we are not fighting what we could see. We are fighting what we cannot see. See, once we start to fight what we cannot see, what we can see, then we lose because mm -hmm. we're fighting what, see the devil, see flesh and blood is a distraction. 
See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, he, if once you start growing up, once you start growing up in Christ and come out of baby food, and you he first he tells you that you fight that you that your that your Satan that uh your enemy love your enemies. That's what he tells you at first. Love your enemies. Do good to those who misuse. No, he doesn't you. say fight your enemies. No, he said love them. There you go. And then he turns here and says, "We wrestle not against what we can see, which is your flesh and blood. You're not fighting what you can see. I'm not fighting my enemy. I'm fighting who who is. I'm not fighting who really who who really is your enemy. Satan. Satan is really truly the enemy. He is the alpha and the omega of enemy. He turned. He did that." So now we got to fight him back with this power of God. He gives us power to fight him. How? What's the power of God to fight him? Take on the whole armor of the word, the word, all of the word, living right, talking right, talking right, doing what this word tell you to do. Come out of sin so that you can, that you're not on his side. See, long as you, as long as you're sinning, you're on Satan's side. Mm. We don't want to be on his side in no way, shape or form. Well, I see it a lot different than you on, on, on that scripture. So go ahead. Huh? He, somebody else could probably see it like you see it, Brother Wayne. Go yeah, put well, it out you never there. Know. Yeah, put it out there. You never and know. And then I'm just going to eat I'm saying eat, is eat, what I'm saying. We do not fight against a flesh and blood. I believe that they're not talking about you and God fighting the spiritual realm. I think what he's saying is that God and his angels are the ones that fight the spiritual battles. That they are the ones because of the fact they are spirit. We we don't get we don't walk in the we don't we're we're human beings, and we therefore don't have that authority over them. Except, let me say this: except when a demon spirit enters into somebody, we can cast them out. And why do we have that authority to do that? Because of the fact that dominion belongs to us. That's why. And those spirits that are entering other people, they're entering uh, their illegal, illegal aliens. They're not supposed to be there. And we have the authority. What We have the dominion over the earth. So therefore, uh, we have the ability to throw them out. But do we fight in spiritual realms? No. I don't think we do. Because God got his own army. Jesus said himself. When he was standing before Pontius Pilate, he said, I can bring down the host of angels to take you out. See, in other words, he's got his army. He has his army and it's headed by, of course, we know Michael, the archangel. Therefore, his army is the one that fights against spiritual palaces and power. She just read a scripture there that said that, that Michael himself was the one that fought against the devil to throw him out of heaven. It wasn't us. It was it was Michael. When when Daniel was in in the lion's den, it was Michael that fought against the 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 king of Persia. He said, "I would have gotten here earlier, but I had to fight the king of Persia." Say, does it say that Daniel fought the fight of Persia? No, no. The spiritual realm deals with the spiritual realm. That's what I'm saying. The flesh doesn't get involved that spiritual realm. They don't die until you die and, and go to heaven, then you become spirit yourself. Okay? You have a spirit within you that, that's able to uh, talk with God and so forth, but uh, that spiritual battle goes on and it goes on between God and Satan. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay, you want me want me to read my part of it? Go you do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> Put your arm up. Let's on wrestle. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against what we can see. Once again, flesh and blood is what you can see. Flesh and blood. Uh, uh, everybody is not on the same level as you are in, in Christ. What happens is some people don't know how to bind the spirit of witchcraft right. when they come talk to them. And then they're saying what the devil say to them to you. This is what God is after. Understand what you fight. Listen, it says I, we're, we're fighting against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Listen, wherefore take unto you 
the whole armor of God. This is the armor. The word is the mm -hmm. whole armor. You could put you get to put that on you. You get to listen. But that you, that you, not the angels, not, 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 he said that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We are in an evil day yep. to be able to stand against these witches and demons and warlocks and curses. These peoples is calling your name. Do you understand me? These folks know who you are. They know you have a, a army with you to come up against him, become a, to come up against Satan. And we and they got their army and God's got our, his army. And that's us. And Satan got his army, which is warlocks and witches. They are for real. They don't only come out. They, it ain't, the, so, they ain't just the ones that come out on Halloween. They are out there every day praising Satan more than 90% of us, 90% of us are praising God. Are you saying that uh, God's army is not strong enough to fight the devil? He needs our help to do it. Let me tell you something. What he wants us to be is as wise as a serpent. Did yeah. you know that? He said, be wise as a serpent. He wants us to be wise. He wants us to have wisdom and understanding on the enemy. He, the, the enemy is against Satan, but the enemy is coming. What did he say? I am angry with the inhabitants of the earth. He said he was coming down with great wrath because he only, he know he only had but a short time. He's angry with everything that God inhabits. So what God does is he lives in you. He lives in me. And then he mm -hmm. says, I put the strength in you. Now you go forth and take him down because I'm in you. He, when, he, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, he lives in you. You have the strength. He said, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. So listen, it says here, I'm going to finish reading. It says, stand, stand therefore having your lines great about with truth, have on a breastplate of, right, breast right, of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. <laughs> Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery docks of the wicked. See, he's going to shoot fiery darts at you, and oh, he's absolutely. telling you in this word how to how to that. how to be able to stand and take it. You ain't. Yeah. He won't take you down when he when he oh. shoot him at you. If you won't get afraid, why? Why won't you get afraid? Because you also have. The 91st Psalms. It, the 91st Psalm won't let you be afraid. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know about that, Brother Wayne? The 91st Psalm that won't let you be afraid of the fiery dots of the wicked. Yeah, but then again, you know, but then again, we're talking about resisting the devil here. Mm -hmm. then, uh, then we we're see. not talking about fighting him. We're talking about resisting Okay, him. listen. But he did say that you may be able to stand at this. If you fight him with the word. You fight him with what he tells you, what God gives you. God's giving you this word. Listen, and in, in, in 91st Psalm says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the nonsense pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid when this stuff, when the mark of the beast come, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror, nor the, or by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come your, nigh your dwelling. Only with thy eyes, shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habilitation, there shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling again. He said, because you know his name. Because you know his name. Not because I could just say Jesus. I know his name because I live right. I want to do what's right before his face, okay? It's time to get it right, saints of God. It's time to come all the way. It's time to teach your children how to fight this battle. Fighting, to me, not with your hands. We understand that. Most, most Christians understand we're not talking about fighting. A, you can't fight something you can't see. That's what he's telling you. Stop fighting what you can see. Fight what you can't see. And that's the darkness. Listen. And he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Listen. 
They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, which is Satan. Young lion and dragon shall thou trample under your feet. You ain't got to be afraid when 6-6 six, six come, when they tell you today you can't buy, sell, or any of that. You ain't got to be afraid of that. You All you got to do is break out the 91st song and says, because he has set his love upon me, Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon him and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and under him. And won't, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Break out that 91st Psalms on him when he start to come with his mark of the yeah, beast. Yeah. Let him know you ain't, that's all right. I'm not afraid. Whatever he, he tell you, you, you can't go buy no food without that mark. You can't go. Uh, uh, to the hospital without that mark. Don't get. Don't be afraid. Start calling on Jesus' name. Start practicing using Jesus' name. Because guess what? The darkness don't want you using that name. Well, think, Come on. I, when you're talking about fear and stuff like that, there is a, a godly fear of God. And, yeah, there, uh, there's a godly fear. But I also think that the Bible also tells us that in those days, woe to the women who give birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Mm -hmm. Because the fact that she's going to have to choose between her salvation or feeding her kids. Because at that time, she's not going to be able to get food for her Well, baby. see, the thing is, it doesn't matter. Because if you have the refuge of God, if you're in 91st Psalms, like I told them to be, God going to take care of you. You don't have to be afraid of having your baby or being in a time like that. Because God said, if you live right, I will take care of you. I will never leave you well, nor forsake you. God would never you. put that in there if it wasn't going to happen. Well, it's going to happen, yeah, but he absolutely. never said. But it never said that God wouldn't be there. It never said that he wouldn't feed them. He never said that he wouldn't take care of her. Well, I would think that the reason why he said that was because at that time you cannot buy or sell. Okay. Therefore, okay. therefore the food for the for the baby is not going to be okay, and the milk isn't going to last okay. forever. Okay, you got. Okay, listen to this. Remember the pe remember the people who went into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. They had nothing. Huh? Yeah. God said, I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I'm glad you brought that up. Because now you can go over to the wilderness. You can go over to that part where Moses, where he took them people into the wilderness. There was nothing. Nothing. So, therefore, listen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He fed them people from where? Where did, where did it come from? The sky? Where did he fall? What, what was the name of that? Manna. Manna. It was called Manna. And he still got more manner. Don't you ever believe that God can't take care of everything that's his? He can take care of you in a well, time maybe, of trouble maybe, like that. Maybe he's talking about mm -hmm. the, that, uh, you know, up until the time that God brings down the manner or whatever he's going to do, that you're going to have to stand between your salvation and, and your children. Listen. And uh, uh, that's going to be a tough thing to do. Well, the thing I is, mean, is this, he's not going to be tough. Remember, he will not put on you too much that you can't handle. If he give you a baby, he's going to take care. Some of us mothers already know that. Some of us mothers have been in then already. Why God, well, then why would God say woe well, to the mothers? Because babies. they're going to have a hard time in that time. They're going to have it's a hard, be hard time but, but But he did never say I wouldn't be there. He didn't never oh, say, say that, that he wasn't, wasn't going to take care I of never He that. just wanted them to understand that in that time, it's going to be kind of harsh because you're going to be carrying around a suckling. Well, let's see what the hard times are going to be. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the second, the first one is Satan is a creation, not a creator. Here's the second one. The mark, mark of the beast is literal and visible. In other words, you know, all this deal about having chips in your hand and your and, and that kind of stuff. See, that's all hidden. See, that's not that's not visible to where people can see it. Uh, when I read that, the first thing that came to me was when uh, uh, when uh, who was it? Uh, shoot, uh, shoot! I can't even think of the two the two boys. What was their name? Uh, you know, from Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. When Cain, when Cain killed Abel, what did God do to him? Placed a mark on him that everyone could see. So they went kill him. On his forehead to everyone that could see it. In other words, it wasn't hidden. It wasn't a chip. It wasn't. It wasn't the vaccine. Uh-oh. It was a literal 
number that you could actually see yourself. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to go underneath the skin to do it. It was right on top of the skin. The Bible says on top of the skin. Let's see, hold on. Maybe. Yeah, they must not want to talk too bad. <laughs> they hung up. But see, the Bible says it's on the skin, not underneath it. He said you get that on the skin. So therefore, something that you're going to be able to see, literally see in that person to know that he has taken taken the taken the number. The mark of the beast. Yeah, the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's something that's visible mm -hmm. and something that you can see. And it's literal. It's not something that's imaginary. You have to, and two, you can't, once you get this mark, there's no turning around, you're going to hell. That's once right. you get this mark, once you That's sell your soul to Satan, you sow your soul. And guess what, brother? One, it's not going to be a, a fool you thing. Yeah. He's going to let you know just what you're doing. Oh, yeah. To do this, you need to sell your soul. I need your soul. So give, take this mark and we, we'll let you do what you want to do for the, mm -hmm. for the short time that you're on this earth. Remember, hell is eternal. Now, this is where we get into Come on. Uh, number three. All right. The mark will be given as a sign of devotion to the Antichrist and a passport to commerce. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe it's in 14. Uh, I know it's in 14, but I can't remember where it's at. But it talks about uh, not being able to buy or sell. Oh, oh, that's uh, in Revelation. That's yeah. also where you were. That's in 14. Yeah, that's where you were. Uh, well, that's where I got it. Yeah, you got it. That's you're right. It's in um it's in Revelation 14. Yeah, it's in that it's in that chapter with the rest of the stuff we were just reading out of Revelation where uh yeah it says uh 13. Sorry, he 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 causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to go. receive the mark in their right hand or their forehand. Right there, right there. And no man might buy or sell or save he that hath the mark or name of the beast. Or the, the number, number of his name. name. That's what he's saying. You got to have that to buy, sell, or, 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 any, 18 or exchange. It says, 18, it says, here is wisdom. Now, if you want wisdom, listen to this. Mm -hmm. Because it says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understand count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Six 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 six. Mm -hmm. That's the number of man. That's number, number of, that, that number come of God forth. is seven seven seven. Number of Jesus is eight eight eight. That's the yeah. number of the the. Then we as Christians, we must get prepared. You cannot. You must have your see, faith gonna, in Jesus. See, you're not going to be asked to take it. Uh, you're not going to have the choice. You you have the choice of not taking or taking it. But what I'm saying is, you're going to be forced on. This decision is going to be forced upon you. Why do you think it's going to be forced upon you? Why? Because the devil, because the devil is one-sided. Mm -hmm. He's he's not he's not uh, uh, one that has the giving nature to give you a, another opportunity or another choice. His choice is the only choice. Well, see, the thing is, is this is um, we're that's where we differ at because you don't have to. Satan wants you to give it. Give what you got to him uh, automatically. He wants you to want to give it to him. And you got people already set up to take the mark of the beast, believe it or not. They mm -hmm. want to take the mark of the beast when they, they're getting prepared to take it in this well, world as we sit here. And Let, it, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why people will do that is because the devil will deceive them. He's a deceiver. Uh, he'll, he, he'll deceive them into mm -hmm. thinking what they're doing is right. That's right. And that's exactly what is going on now uh, with the government and so forth and what they're passing with laws and so forth. Uh, that uh, they, you know, they make you feel like it's right in what they're saying, mm -hmm. but it, behind it, the the Bible says there's sudden destruction. Yes, Hallelujah. So, so you have to you have to understand and be and be able to discern mm -hmm. uh, what is God and what isn't. Well, God. see, now this one time when the mark of the beast come, he's not going to deceive you. He's going to tell you that you're selling your soul to Satan. We're telling you right now too, that it wants you, and it's in this word. It's well, the in Bible the Bible. Says right here. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in uh, Revelation 13, 14, mm -hmm. it says, and he deceiveth them all mm -hmm. that dwell on the earth by the means of their miracles 
In other words, he comes down and does all these miracles mm -hmm. to, to deceive you into thinking that he is the one true God. But he, but at the same time, there's a verse in there that says, if it were possible, he would be able to fool the very elect. Yeah, it's not possible not to fool the elect of God. In other words, not everybody is going to be deceived by this. Right. Not everybody. Right. But m most of the people will be deceived by it because they're not under this constitution. But understanding, we're preaching to you today so that you don't be deceived. That's right. That you won't take that mark. We'll do you understand that the uh, vaccine was a, a set up? It was set to do just that. Do you remember? Do anybody remember taking, they took the vaccine and then they had to get a card. At one point you had to have that card to say that you had the vaccine. It's places you right. couldn't go. It's right. places, things you couldn't do. If you could not produce that you had the vaccine. Well, I think what this is, uh, you know, what the vaccine and stuff, all this is, of course, we, we know that the Bible tells us that whatever this beast is or this number is, you're going to be able to see it. You're not, it's not going to be hidden. It's not going to be through a vaccine. It's not going to be through all that. It'll be something that'll be put on your hand that you'll be able to see. Tattoo. And, and, able and, to see. and the living Bible says the Bible, tattoo. The, the Bible says it will be on the skin. Okay. It doesn't say in the skin. No. But, uh, uh, it's there on the forehead too. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is, is basically what this is, uh, what the six six six. Now listen to me. This is good. Okay. This is a duplication of salvation. This is what it is. It's it's the devil's duplicate to God's salvation because without taking this number, you will not be saved because you 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 die. See, so you will not be saved. So this is this is the because we know that the devil duplicates God. He duplicates in everything he does. God's got his triune God, which is God, uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Correct. Right. A, okay. The devil has his, which is the devil, Antichrist, and the uh, false prophet. Okay. See these three. How they du duplicate. Uh, also, they go through a bloodline, just as Jesus went through a bloodline. You're right. See? right. So it, 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 there's a constant uh, duplication going on here. And I think that this 666 is the devil's uh, uh, duplication for salvation. Uh, in other words, you have to accept the number 666. Uh, otherwise, you're not saved. Uh, and the Christians, if you don't accept Jesus, you're not saved. Amen. See? So therefore, there's the, the and then 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 it also has uh, um, in the in, in Revelation where Jesus God puts His mark in your forehead too. Yeah, you know it says it. It says it out uh, there. Um, it says having His Father's name written in their foreheads. We we'll have our Father's name if you you know uh, written in our foreheads. Where He tells them, "Don't not bother minds that have My name written in their foreheads." Mm -hmm. So. We're, we we want to know that we are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, following Jesus in a time like this, that he is going to protect us, and he is. He's not going to leave us. It's going to look dark, but we're going to have faith in him no matter. That's what he's, remember, he says these words to us. He says, what can separate us from the love of, of God? God? Right. The, 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 the next one here, number four, out of the five things you need to know, Number four is the mark of the beast will not be revealed until halfway through the tribulation. So what, he, he believes the way I believe that uh, when you don't see the tri tribulation, the church is going to be raptured out before that happens. Who believe that? Huh? Who said that the church was going to be raptured Where out? Where I got this information from. What, you got that from the Bible. Huh? You got that from yeah. the Bible? Yeah, it's in the Bible. It said that the, we, we, we're going to be raptured before right. the mark of the beast comes. Right. We have, because the Bible says that we're not we're not destined to be under God's wrath. We're not under His wrath. So therefore, so what's going to happen if what if part of my what my Bible says is that we're going to see we some do this things. all the time. <laughs> well, that's and it's good because there's people that think like he think, and there's people that yeah, think like I think. Yeah. So we need to bring this together. Pre it's pre-trib or post-trib is what we're talking about right now. Pre-tribulation, pre -tribulation. and you got post-tribulation. Yeah, but you know he said he wasn't coming until the moon turned 
to blood and the sun. You, mm -hmm. you do know that. You do know. Yeah, because it that. happened during the tribulation. Do you know he still said he wasn't Because it happened to during the, the tribulation. The tribulation, is, that's, that's going to be, do you know how bad that's going to look? No, like I, sun I believe there's shine. a lot of things that's going to happen in the tribulation. But I believe that that uh, the, the church itself, because in order for, uh, thank you, Jesus, the only person, the only people that that uh, is in the way of Satan right now is the church. The church is what stops him from being total evil, is the church. Once the church is taken out, then the world becomes totally depraved at that time because there's no one there to stop him. But the church has to be taken out for that to happen. And who's the church? We are the church. We are the church. The church of living stones. We are the church. We are the ones to be raptured out. So uh, uh, therefore, after that, then, then Satan comes in and reveals himself after that. So uh, that's number four. The mark of the beast will not be revealed until halfway through the tribulation. The people that stay in the tribulation, there are some in tribulation that is good. I, there's some that are going to be saved because they won't give in to the, to the number and stuff. So therefore, they're, they're going to be saved. But there are other people in the tribulation. Most of the people will give in to this idea of the 666. And therefore, once you take the 666, that's number five, all who take them. The mark of the beast will be in the tribulation. And once you take the mark of the beast, you're you cannot be saved. You're you not. You're, you're not. You're, once you're you done. take that mark, you you you're on your way to hell. You're there's no way. there's no 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 you you can't say, Oh, I, I changed my mind. Yeah, it's a done deal. Um, because you sold you sold your soul to the devil right. for whatever you was trying to get you know this is why we got to have faith in christ this is why we got to have faith in his name that he's gonna that we have faith that he can take care of everything you gotta get to the point that you believe in that name like you believe in your next breath yes. out your mouth yeah you gotta be able to say jesus 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 and believe that that name is gonna work for you yes because you know what let me tell you it's gonna come a day that you may not be go be able to go to a church building you may need to have Jesus inside of you wherever you are. You may not be able to call on man, which is your pastor. That's another man. You are going to have to learn who Jesus is for yourself. Have a relationship with God, your own self. Get with him so that you can protect your family. Because we don't, we know where we've been, y'all, but we don't know where we're going. And we need, to, we need to also uh, memorize the scripture memorize it if we're talking about the 666 and stuff you better memorize that scripture because right now they're talking about eliminating bibles they're you know to take them totally out of circulation so that you cannot get a copy of the bible so therefore you have to memorize these scriptures so you have them uh because that's going to happen and it, see that's what that's what stops uh that's what separates uh evil from from Totally evil. You want to talk on, huh? I'm at the radio station. You want to talk on the radio? We talking about uh, the mark of the beast. Okay, love you. Okay. So there, therefore, therefore, you have to memorize because of the fact they're going to take the Bible away from you. And I can remember years ago, and I and I and I meant to bring this up earlier, but. Years ago, and I'm sure John probably remembers it, mm -hmm. there was a movie in 1973 with Charlton Heston, Edward G. Robinson, uh, was the name Chuck of? Connors. It was called... Uh, he, I don't think he over there. Shoot, I can't think of it right it's now. Soylent Green? Oh, he over there. Oh, a, 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 a Solvent Green. Soylent Green. Soylent Green, yeah. Soylent green. Okay. Soylent Green. those names. I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, and... In this movie, what it represented was was the was the world was overpopulated. Mm. Therefore, no jobs were available. People were homeless, all living on streets and and gutters and so forth like that. And uh, they had a one world police force that they had. And and uh, uh, Charlton Heston played a, a captain or something in this police force. And only the rich could eat. 
the, the poor could not eat. They had to depend on governmental subsidies that gave food to them, which was called soil and green. And they got it every, I think every Tuesday or something, they had to line up to get it. And it was little green wafers that they give you a bunch in a bag. And uh, people would be, poor people would be over there eating and eating this, this soil and green stuff. And uh, in their society, the older people were forced to give up their lives. Uh, euthanasia type thing. Mm, okay. And they would have them at a certain age come in and they would they would put them to death. Well, in the movie, what happened is, is that that uh, Charlton Heston uh, grandfather, who was played by uh, Edward G. Robinson, uh, he was called to give up his life because he got too old for, for functioning in society. So he, they turned around and they told him to come in so they could they could kill him. So uh, Charlton Heston followed him, and where they, after they killed him, what did they do with the body? Well, what they did was they chopped up the body and everything, put it in the sun and green, so people that were eating sun and green were eating the people. Yeah, we thank see, you. See, you know so, what? Well, it, 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 you know, it does show a lot of things that are happening today. You, but you know what, brother? One? What? There's leaves on trees and grass and all kinds of stuff out there. We're going we gonna to put that together, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you're going to learn a lot in these last days. There's a lot to be learned. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You ain't got to, you you can go out there and get your own grass and figure it out. It's all different kind yeah. of grasses out there. I never saw so. Listen, even on Facebook, it's so much they're telling you now how to survive. Go out there, different kind of grass. Everything in the grass just ain't grass. We've been cutting stuff down that so has I, been I nutrients. Think, I think the lot of reason why you're going to learn mm -hmm. is because revelation is going to be opened up. There you go. See, there and go. that's how you're going to learn because revelation, revelation is going to show. God doesn't stay on revelation forever. He gives different revelations through different different times of of, of earth. Uh, dig, uh, dig, uh, shoot, I can't think of the name of the word, but it's different times. It means to have different times. Uh, you know, it's saying in the Bible now that the in the last days, the love of many would wax cold. That's right. In the last days, men would be after uh, money. Money would become their gods. Right. You know, right. it, it money would be uh, an idol. And that's why God is going to take it down mm -hmm. because he will not have another God before him. That's why our money, if you notice, is becoming no good. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about investing in a lot of gold and silver in case the uh, uh, dollar goes down. That's again. what it is going to go. Yeah, it's it's going to go. go. Therefore, they're going to have to have something to barter with. Barter. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. going to have to have something. So they'll probably use gold and silver and, and precious metals, that kind of thing, to barter to get what you want. Maybe that's another reason why you can't buy or sell. Nobody will have any money. They won't have no money. <laughs> you, know, it's a, money. you know, it's the verse in, the, in Revelation said you can, you will have a whole bunch you won't of money. Be able to, you won't be able to work to get money. You won't even have enough money to buy. Do you know you have enough money you can't buy a loaf of bread? That's right. That's what it says in the word. But see, the thing is, we're not to be afraid for. We're not fear mongering. We're not trying to make you fearful. We want you to understand that it's time to be like the air. Oh, get to... prepared for a time in a day like this. I was going to tell you, Joseph Cotton was also in this movie. And what it represents is that only the rich was able to have meat. Mm. Only the rich. Mm -hmm. uh, the poor couldn't have, have it, but the rich could. And what happens is this Joseph Cotton gets killed, and he's a rich man, mm -hmm. and he has meat in his refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And and Trouton Huston comes in to investigate the murder, mm -hmm. and he sees all this meat, and he takes it home uh, for him and his grandfather. Well, see, now, now what you're seeing now, what you're hearing now is they're talking about, have you heard about the uh, the bird um, shoes? Bird flu. The bird flu. The bird flu where the people bleed out their eyes and you bleed out your nose and mouth. And they said that it's coming from the farmland. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the farm. So that's telling me that their plant is coming from the farm. They say cows can have it. You know, they've been talking about the milk that's coming from the cows. Mm -hmm. And see what I, I believe in my heart that what's going to happen is they're going to close down the farms. They're going to close it down because they're going to say it's got bird flu. They're going and to say it's for for the protection of. Oh the, come on! For the come protection on. of the country. Yes, you know. Yes, and that. they're not and they're not going to allow them. So to. people will accept it. Yes, they will accept it. They, they, wow, brother Wayne, you are a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. 
but that's the truth. That is the truth. He he said it. He put it all in one sentence. They're gonna make it sound like this is a good thing. Are we? You, we got. We're not gonna we let you to, eat we meat have anymore. To protect you. We we're, have to do this. The farmers you. are not gonna have to farm. Do you know they cut the farms? Do you know we? What are we gonna sell abroad? Yeah. We can't sell food abroad anymore. We already our shelves in the grocery store are already banned. Well, like I said earlier, I said that I heard that uh, uh, they want the United States to be the leader in globalism. Mm. Now, globalism is basically this new world order right. that is is satanistic. In you know what I want us to do? I want us to. We're gonna we're gonna work on this next time. We're not gonna end here. We're gonna come back again next Friday and talk about this. But you know what I want to work on? I want to work on. Uh, finding out how many um, marijuana shops do they have in uh, Russia, China. I want to find out. As far as I know, they don't have any. Are you serious? I, as far as I know, they don't because, uh, you know, it's, I know in Islam you can have drugs, but you can't drink alcohol. <laughs> Figure that one out. Yeah. Well, you see, know, the thing but, is, what the thing is here in, in just here living in Flint, they have three marijuana shops in walking distance of each other mm -hmm. which you know i'm i'm thinking why would you need to do that well i th uh, the reason is is because a lot of people can't handle stress they can't handle uh, so what are they going to do when the mark of the beast come and they tell them you won't be getting this marijuana unless you take the mark of the beast. beast right well you won't have another you won't be able to take another sip of the, you won't be able to get drugs you will not get marijuana and all the people who think it's just wonderful when they, they tell you you got to have a mark of the beast to come in here and get this i'm telling you and of course not one of my fam my family said they just grow their own but <laughs> <laughs> you just, listen let me tell you, it's time to it's time to get right with God. Oh yeah, it's time to come all the way. Let everything on this earth go. Don't wait until tomorrow. Ooh, hallelujah! Do it now. The Bible says salvation is is today, not tomorrow. It's today. Uh, do it right now when you have the when you have the ability to do it. There may be a time when you can't even you can't even speak uh, because of some accident you may have or something, mm -hmm. and you might not be able to speak. And the Bible says. Uh, that uh, that salvation comes out of the mouth mm. when you speak. Yes. So uh, we want to be able to do that while you're able to do that. So it's it's good to uh, uh, come to the Lord while you have the mental while capacity we, yes, to do it. Yes, Jesus. And see, it's going to get a harsh time. And you want to be getting prepared. You want to get prepared to know just, who, Jesus, I want to be as close as the 91st Psalm say I need to be. Well, a lot of people going out there and, and, and you know, I remember years ago when they had the atomic bomb and all that, all people started going out prepared with bomb shelters. They all went out and bought bomb shelters and everything to prepare. Now, if we can prepare for that, Mine. why can't we prepare for salvation? Amen. I Amen. mean, salvation is much more, much more important than that bomb shelter. You know, although the bomb shelter will save you for a while, but it doesn't mean that you'll, you'll survive at all. Because you can still die from the radiation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the point is, is, is you can still die from the sins that you do. Mm -hmm. So you can still die from that. But salvation takes you out of that. Mm -hmm. Takes you out of the, the grasp of the, of the evil one. Takes you out of that grasp and puts you in the protection of the righteous God. And we still have the rapture. We, we, we know not the time nor the day that's going to happen. But it's still, it's going to happen. But he didn't say, he didn't exactly, he said when. He did say, he said, when everybody in the world hears the gospel. Yeah. Then, then he will come. Uh, so we're getting close to that. Absolutely. Because we have so many, uh, tech, we have technology. With that, we're going to say uh, goodbye to everybody. I'm going to do one song before we leave here. And I think it's a good song. And it goes along with what we're talking about today. And it's by James Taylor called Shower the People. Mm, okay. And mm -hmm. what it's talking about is showing people with love while you have the ability to do it. Join us next week. We will be continuing on. We are not gonna, we're not going to stop here. Okay. I'm going to do this song for you real quick. And then uh, we're going to say good night, goodbye until next week. But I want to do this one by uh, James Taylor. Your love, Jesus loves them all.
Oh, shower the people you love with love. Shower them day and night. They say in every life a little rain must fall. Oh, let it fall. Lord, pour the latter rain. Pour the latter rain. Oh, Lord, over all. Make it rain. Oh, Lord, make it rain. Oh, yes, make it rain. Cover us, Lord, with your latter rain. By James Taylor. No. Oh, okay. So we're going to talk to you next Friday at oh, one o'clock. Make sure you tell all your friends and and relatives and so forth to come in and listen to what we have to say. Uh, some of you will not agree with a lot of things that we say. Call in and let us know. Let You're us know. Welcome. We don't know that you don't know if you don't let us know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So we're going to see you next week and have a great day and God bless you.